right, today is April 27th. We're going to do the homework corrections from Monday the 26th, which is number 5. Let's get started. Number 1, the height of a room would most likely be 10, is it feet, inches, or yards? Well, 1 foot equals 12 inches. So inches, if you measure between the bottom of your bottom lip and right under your nose, that is about an inch. So it's really about that long. And then a yard is three feet. So the height of my room, and, and rooms can be different, but most likely it's going to be ten feet. 10 yards would be a really, really tall room and 10 inches would be way too short for me. So it is feet. Number two, which letter on the shape is beside a right angle? So hopefully you guys know from lots of homework corrections that a right angle is marked with this box, meaning that it's 90 degrees, not 90%, <laughs> 90 degrees. And then anything smaller than 90 is acute, and anything larger than 90 is obtuse. All right, so I see an acute angle here. Let's see, I'm going to make this purple, I'm going to make this blue, and I'm going to make right yellow. So I'm looking at A right now and I see that A is smaller than 90, so it's acute. B is way smaller than 90, it's also acute. C is obtuse, it's way bigger than 90. And D is exactly 90. So the letter next to that angle that's 90 degrees or a right angle is D. Number three, one half of 20. So a couple of quick things I wanted to uh, remind you of here as we're moving into map testing is that the word of has a different meaning in math and that is multiply. Anytime you see of it means to multiply. So if I have one half times, here I have a whole number and I need to make it into a fraction. So remember to do that you just put the whole number on top and a one on the bottom. Now to multiply you go straight across both numerator and denominator. So one times twenty is twenty and two times one is two. Now this literally reads twenty divided by two. So let's set that up. 20 divided by 2. 2 goes into 2 one time because that's exactly 2. Bring down the 0. How many 2's go into 0? That's 0. And we have nothing left over. So 10 is our final answer. That's how you could work that out mathematically, but hopefully in your head you know that if you have 20 cookies, and you want to eat half of them and save half for later, you're going to eat 10, okay? So some of this has to do with like just logic and does it make sense, but when in doubt, if you can't figure it out, then you move to the mathematical side of it and you get it all figured out, okay? All right, let's move on. Number four, write as a decimal, two and three tenths. All right, just like the word of has another meaning in Mathanese, and does as well, and hopefully you remember that it is a decimal point. So the two, obviously, becomes a two whole number, and three tenths is going to look like this, because this is the tenths place, okay? So I'll put that in my answer, two and three tenths. 
Number five, if the pattern continues, how many boxes should be shaded in row D? All right, so let me examine this real quickly. We go from one to three, and then three to five. So when I'm looking at the pattern, I'm gonna put this down here like you've seen before. One, three, five, and I need to figure this out, okay? So to get from one to three, I add two. To get from three to five, add two. Okay, that works out. So from five to seven, I have to add two. So there should be seven. It doesn't tell me I have to shade them, it just wants me to write my answer here. All right. Your first clue is to write how many would be shaded if there was a row E. How many would be shaded if there was a row E? That's your first clue. I gotta write my answer down so I don't forget what I'm asking you. Okay, next one. Ooh, I love these. Number six has to do with order of operations because we have two times three plus three times four. The way they are grouped is significant. We have to do what's in parentheses first. So I'm gonna do both sets of parentheses. Two times three is six. Now I'm gonna rewrite the plus sign and three times four is 12. So now, really easy, I'm left with six plus 12. And six plus 12 is 18. If I did that in a different order and ignored the parentheses, we would get a very different answer. So it's important to make sure we're paying attention to those parentheses. Number seven, what is the area of the shape to the right? Now Jocelyn asked about this yesterday during class, she was working on it, and it's as simple as counting the squares, but I wanna show you why, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The area is nine, okay? Let me show you why, and I'm gonna do this in red. If I were to draw the rest of this shape in making it a rectangle, oh, this is tricky. Okay, so now it is a rectangle, and if I were to count the sides, I'd have one, two, three, four, five. And if I were to count these sides, I have four, right? So area equals length times width. If we wanted to figure this out, I could say it's 20 minus all the ones that are red. Minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So 20 minus 11 gives us nine. So we can still use this formula to think about area, um, but when you're given a, a shape that's broken down into square units, you can absolutely just count them. So I hope that makes sense. Number eight, in the chart to the right, the Y numbers are blank times the X numbers. So here we are with X's and Y's again. This has to do with our axes, it has to do with algebra, um, and it'll all come together as you get into sixth and seventh grade math. But let's make sure we're paying attention to our X's and our Y's. So it says the Y numbers are blank times the X numbers, they must be bigger. So how do I get from one to three? How do I get from two to six? And how do I get from four to 12? What's the common operation that I use? Well, one 
times 3 gives me 3. 2 times 3 gives me 6. 4 times 3 gives me 12. Whoops. Okay, so they are 3 times the x numbers. Number 9, simple subtraction, and we're going to use addition to check our answers. Starting in the 1's place, 9 minus 8 is 1, and 4 minus 2 is 2. To do a quick check, I'm going to add the two smaller numbers and I should get the larger number, and I do. That tells me that this is the correct answer. So 21. And then starting in the ones place, 1 minus 2, I cannot do that, so I have to borrow. My 5 becomes a 4, so that my 1 becomes an 11. Now we have 11 minus 2 gives me 9 and 4 minus 3 gives me 1. To check it, I'm going to circle my two smaller numbers, come over here, and I'm going to do the opposite operation, which is adding. And 9 plus 2 is 11, carry the 1, 3, 4, 5. I get 51, which is the same as that. Gives me a check mark, telling me that this math was correct to begin with, so 19. For clue number two, clue number two, I want you to tell me the difference between my answers. If these are my answers, I want you to tell me the difference between those two for clue number two. All right, now we have some multiplication. Um, at this point in the year, I really shouldn't be using my multiplication chart. Hopefully they are in my head with mastery. So 4 times 5 gives me 20. Put down the 0, carry the 2. 5 times 1 gives me 5, plus 2 more gives me 7. So 70, and over here, 7 times 3 gives me 21. Put down the 1, carry the 2. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 2 more is 16. Remember, these are fact families, so I could easily ask you, hey, what is 70 divided by 14? And you should be able to tell me that it is 5. Or I could say, what is 161 divided by 23? And you would be so smart and be able to tell me that it's 7. All right, number one on ELA side. Compound words are words that are made by combining two smaller words. For example, aircraft is made up of the words air and craft. Some of the words below, sorry, combine the words below to form compound words. So, for example, if we have out and door, we can smash those together and make the word outdoor. Doesn't work for just any two words, okay? I can't take um, book and towel and make a book towel. That That's nonsense. So some of the things work and some of them don't. If I were to take down and hill, I would be making downhill. If I were to take fire and house, I would make firehouse, which is where the firemen hang out and keep all of their supplies while they're waiting to be called out to a fire. Number two, last week we learned all about the period. Without our next punctuation mark, you wouldn't be able to ask questions. It tells the reader that an answer is expected. This punctuation mark is known as the question mark. Read the following three sentences. See if you can figure out where the two question marks and one period belong. So remember, it tells the reader that an answer is expected. Are you going to the store? Am I expecting an answer? Yes, so question there. 
I like to eat pizza. Does that indicate that I'm expecting an answer? No. So that one has a period. Do you like to eat pizza? That one definitely I'm looking for an answer. Okay. Number three. Comparing means to take two objects and look for traits they have in common or for differences. One form of comparing is known as simile. That's how you pronounce it, simile. A simile compares two objects and generally uses the words like or as. Read the three statements below. Circle the two objects that are being compared and underline the connecting word. When you have directions asking you to underline or circle, this is a really good idea, is to circle the things you have to circle and underline the things you have to underline. That way I quickly have a visual and I remember what I have to do, so I'm following directions. So number one says, Tamar was as tall as a tree. So we're using as, I'm going to underline the as, and the two objects, Tamar and tree. Uh, number two, Mary was bright like the sun, like gets underlined, and I'm comparing Mary to the sun. The city shone like a torch in the night. So like again, and I'm comparing the city to a torch. Cool. Number four, quick write. Read the prompt. You must choose one of the two choices and use at least three sentences to explain your decision. <laughs> Would you rather eat baked ladybugs or fried worms. This one, believe it or not, is pretty easy for me. Um, I would much rather eat baked ladybugs, but let me think about why. It just seems that if you bake something, it's crunchy. It's not mushy or gooey, and I can handle crunchy more than gooey. Uh, worms really just gross me out at any point and ladybugs don't bother me. Okay, so I would rather <laughs> eat, oh I got a good one too, a good reason, baked ladybugs, period, so that's one, I have to do three. I can handle crunchy things much better than, I'm just going to say gooey because that's what I imagine the consistency of a fried worm. Okay, now, <laughs> my last one is really stupid, but I'm going to say it's healthier to eat things that are baked than to eat things that are fried. <laughs> it's true. To eat baked food. It's healthier to eat baked food healthier to eat baked food than fried food. So I think I would got crunchy things healthier. I got three there. I'm going to reread it to make sure it makes sense. I would rather eat baked ladybugs. I can handle crunchy things much better than gooey things. It's healthier to eat baked food than fried food. I love it. Number five. Write the following sentence in your best cursive on the line below. It is important to read every day. 
Don't you agree? Let's see where they're getting their question marks in there. So it is. Notice when I do these, the things that go above and below the lines, like that tall T, it is important to read, here comes the tall D, every, here comes the Y that goes down below, D that goes up, Y that goes below, and then don't, these are kind of tricky to make, don't you agree? Question mark. Okay. For clue number three, I'm going to give this to you now. Clue number three, I would like for you to draw a ladybug. We just talked about eating crunchy ladybugs, so now I want you to draw a cute little ladybug that's not dead to show me that you're listening. So number six is going to have us look at pronouns, which conveniently we looked at last week when we were talking about point of view. So a pronoun replaces a common or proper noun. Examples of pronouns include he, she, it, they, them, we, his, her. And all of those are on this list as well. It says underline the pronouns in the following sentence. Michelle thought she was going to cry. She is referring to Michelle. She is also referring to Michelle, had never been so scared in her life. Now, I just made a mistake, you guys. I know it's not a big deal, but the directions say to underline. Okay, so I need to go back and make sure that I'm following those directions because that way my teacher knows and I get in a really good habit of following directions. Number seven, testing tip. Read and follow the directions. Directions. Draw three boxes and color half of each. Okay. One. Doesn't say they have to be the same size, so I don't have to be careful about that. color half of each. I'm going to be tricky here and I'm going to color the top half, the left half, and let's do, oh, let's do this. Haha. -ha. There, followed the directions. Number eight, when finding information, it's important to know what information can be found in different resources that you might have available to you. Read the following question and write your answer on the line. For what purpose might you use a thesaurus? We talked about this last week, uh, which makes it a great question for this week. And we talked about finding words with the same meanings. Okay, so... Um, if I was writing a story, uh, and I needed a word that means happy, I could look in a thesaurus. So if you're writing a story about um, spring and you said, the new leaves on the trees make me happy, I am happy when I see the flowers grow, it makes me happy to go outside. Okay, you've written three sentences, but are they good sentences? Not really, because they're all using the word happy. So if the source is something you can use to find other words with that same meaning, like 
joyful or enjoyable. Okay, so at the source is a very handy dandy book. Um, of course, you can absolutely find them online as well. Number nine, fab vocab. Today's literature related word is protagonist. It is a noun and refers to the main character in a fiction or nonfiction story. Think about the book you are currently reading. Who would you identify as the main character or protagonist and why? There are two questions here. Who and why? Well, in our book, the main character is Melody. So I would say in O-O-M-M, -M, the protagonist, because I want to use that new word, protagonist, is Melody. Now here's why. The whole story is told from her point of view. And I'm going to uh, shorten point of view to just POV. Okay? She's the main character. Everything that we're learning about, because it's told from her point of view, is happening to her. All right, now if you're still listening, you have two numbers written down and you have a picture drawn. I want to make sure you are really listening, so I want you to circle the odd number that you wrote down. Circle the odd one. All right, come back to Zoom with your three clues. Um, the one I asked you to draw a picture of, if you're putting it in clues, you can just write the word of or you could find the emoji for it. Okay. Make sure your homework is uploaded to Seesaw for homework number five. Again, both front and back, I still have people not doing both and you will not get credit if I don't have both. Okay, see you back on Zoom.